Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly. We've got a very, very special Ugly Bug Fishing Report from the field in Casper, Wyoming with Dustin White. How you doing, Dustin? Good, Marvin. How are you doing? Staying out of trouble. Been a great three days of fishing. I mean, I mean, I've tried to get you into some trouble fishing, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I could see firsthand whether we were getting into trouble or not. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so folks, uh, I was able to come out here. I've got kind of a, a vacation here in Colorado and Wyoming. Got to spend three days with Dustin and we fished the Miracle Mile and we fished the Big Horn and it was a really great experience. Ton of fish. Um, but, you know, and, and we'll do a regular fishing report that'll come out in about a week, but you know, what we really wanted to talk about was a little bit about the rivers and kind of what we saw, and then also kind of some things that we thought of while we were fishing and talking in the boat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. Yeah. So we fished uh, the middle section uh, of the Miracle Mile uh, for two days, and that was a really interesting fishery because kind of from a composition perspective, it was, you know, a higher proportion of very large fish. And when we say large fish, over 20. Yes, yes. Right, as, oppo- as opposed to kind of the smaller kind of what we would call – not even really small, but what a more typical, like say 12 to 16 inch. Correct. Right. Yep. And then we went over to the bighorn and the bighorn was kind of just the opposite of that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, beautiful fishery and, you know, lots of uh, fish, you know, probably in that 12 to 14 inch with, you know, kind of a smattering of 20 plus fish. Right. right. Yeah. And we typically say that, I mean, that the bighorn, I like to describe it as our variety fishery. Uh, it's typically the one where you're going to get a smattering of sizes, right? You're going to um, kind of have the... The numbers of those fish that are 12 to 14 inches that that are plenty spunky enough to keep it enjoyable. But you're you know, you really are hoping to get into those fish that are north of that 20 mark and and everything in between. Not only that, the variety of species that gives you you have a shot, uh, more likely shot at getting into different trout species beyond just the rainbows that we're typically accustomed to here in central Wyoming. So um, you have a greater probability of hooking into a, a, a stud brown or, or some really nice cutthroat as well. Um, additionally, the scenery on the Bighorn is kind of, kind of ever evolving. It, it, the, there's a variety in what your landscape actually looks like as well. So I always like to tell folks, hey, this is our variety fishery. We're going to typically get into a lot of different sizes. Uh, we're probably going to get into more fish than we do, say, on the mile. But then we'll also um, have just a really beautiful uh, experience floating down the river. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought one of the really interesting things, too, was that, you know, we had typical kind of what I would call tailwater fishery. So we fished, you know, Mm -hmm. annelids and Mm -hmm. things like that, but also like some great, really, really small bugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's the wonderful thing about it is that uh, in in here in Wyoming, we tend to use, at least from the drift boat, we tend to use a three bug rig, especially for nymphing. Now, if we're, you know, dry fly fishing, you might just use one, maybe two. Um, But when we're nymphing, we tend to use three bugs and that gives us, an ability to match the variety of food sources that those fish are really keyed in on. So larger crustaceans and annelids, like you mentioned, but we can also get into some pretty small nymphs. And one of the, the typical conventions that, you know, we grew up hearing that, uh, you know, target big fish with big flies kind of flies out the window on our, on our, on our fishery, because some of the uh, biggest fish we caught here uh, this week with you were on the tiniest of bugs and uh, a lot of times when we're on a streamer uh, float, we'll be hucking meat and getting fish that, you know, aren't much bigger than that streamer we're throwing. So some of that convention kind of goes out the window with with this tailwater fishery we're on. But yeah, yeah. it provides for a, a really exciting and dynamic experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we fish streamers and, you know, they probably none of them were larger than three inches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, these fish, uh, though they uh, are eager to eat things that are. Um, you know, moving through the water and they'll, they'll eat a streamer really well. Oftentimes that they are, uh, um, more prone to, to eat the smaller streamer. Yeah. And so it was interesting too, cause you know, we, we, I guess one of the takeaways we had, um, in our time together was the importance of being flexible. Yes. Right. Yes. And so, you know, we were talking before we started recording, you know, if we had been adamant about fishing dries, we might've fished an hour and a half in three days. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's something I know, you know, we, you and I may not have talked about, but certainly in other interviews and other fishing reports, you know, I think kind of, at least for me, one of the greatest lessons I get from fly fishing is you have to take what the river will give you. Right. Like we are, I mean, that's, that's the amazing thing is that you're entering into another realm and we're not in control, right? Like we can't, we're not manipulating the environment. We, if you want to be successful and in catching fish, then yeah, adapt and observe, right? Observe what is happening 
in nature around you in the immediate environment. And uh, that usually yields positive results as, as we saw this week. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that we, uh, we had a little bit of adversity, we're all safe and sound. <laughs> um, but you know, one of the things that um, we have to really remember is to be prepared. And I think particularly when you travel and like, say, you know, Wyoming, you know, Colorado, Montana, places like that aren't your typical fishery. Uh, you have to remember, like, do you have gas? Yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, we had to patch a tire on a, a boat trailer. Yep. yep. And, um, you know, so all those little things um, that you, you know, it's kind of, you know, for us city folks, you don't think about, um, you know, being somewhere where you can't just pick up your phone and, you know, there's no Uber help. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, um, and I think that's a good point, especially if we're fishing the mile. It's out there. Now, the, the mile itself is rem- remarkably accessible once you get there. You know, the our state's done, uh, you know, a wonderful job of making it uh, to be able to accommodate folks of, of various ability levels and, and, and that sort of thing. But getting there is kind of a, a trek. It's 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 in the middle of nowhere. And so if you run into trouble, um, you need to be a little prepared. So um, that's where making sure, you you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, you have enough food and water, you got, you know, supplies for your vehicle, that sort of thing, especially if folks are going to do a DIY trip uh, and venture out on their own. Yeah. I mean, you know, and another thing that really amazed me too was the the community and, um, you know, how guides look out for each other. Absolutely. Right. And so like we would have been in the soup um, if another guy at the ugly bug didn't have a tire patch kit and a compressor. Yeah. And, and a willingness and his own client as well to say like, Hey, we're going to hold back and make sure you guys are fine. And, and not only that, once they got us patched, they followed us, you know, back to, took a nice and easy on, on the, on the drive back in just to make sure you and I were safe and sound. Um, and that's, I think a testament to just the camaraderie, the community, um, that is within, you know, the, the guides that are, that are here. And it's not unique to just here. I mean, I think within the guiding community as a whole, folks look out for each other. Um, but that is especially true here. And we got to see it today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, cause today we needed help and tomorrow maybe he'll need help. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, folks, we love questions at the articulate fly. You can email them to us. You can DM us. You can even drop them in the comments to our social media posts. And if we use your question, I will send you some articulate fly swag. And remember we have a drawing. If we use your question for an awesome tailwater box. Yes. And we would hope you would come out here to Wyoming to fish, but if you can't, you can certainly use those flies on your own tailwater. Right. As you indicated earlier uh, in our conversation, you know, our tailwater fishery, it accommodates a lot of variety of different uh, flies. And so you're going to get a pretty good smattering of flies, some that are unique to uh, our region of the country and our fishery uh, that uh, we are confident uh, that even if folks are using it elsewhere, they're going to they're going to see some good success with them. Yeah, absolutely. And again, too, you know, if you just mentioned that you listen to the Fisher Report when you go into the bug, you'll get 10 percent off your purchase. And, you know, Dustin, thank you for an awesome time in Wyoming. Oh, thank you for coming. I, I was so, so grateful to be able to share and show off our fishery uh, in the special place that it is. Yeah, we get to fish together again in November with yes. SAO. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, folks, you owe it to yourself to get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Dustin. Tight lines, Marvin. Thanks. Thanks.